What's up, everybody? Welcome to Ohio State Football with Scarlet and Gray. It is game day. It is the best day during the best season, during the best time of the year. It's football season. We're going to give everybody a little bit of a chance to log in here. I'm waiting for one of my co-hosts, Shane Larson, um, to jump in here anytime he gets a chance. And uh, waiting, obviously, for the viewership to get built up. So, um, we'll be with you guys in just a minute. All right. Hey, now we got some viewership coming on. What's up, guys? How are you guys doing? We're doing a pregame chat show, a live show, Buckeyes versus the Rutgers Scarlet Knight coming in in just a minute. Um, subscribe to this channel for more Buckeye content. And as always, please comment below where you are watching from. Uh, I'd love to reach you guys in the comments. Julian says, go Bucks. Thanks so much for watching, Julian. Let us know where you guys are watching from. Um, we're going to get into a lot of stuff today, show how Ohio State does against the Rutgers Scarlet Knights, how uh, uh, CJ Stroud will do against a disciplined defense and a good defensive mind and Greg Schiano. Um, we got Julian's already given his score predictions. Whoa, 42-6, final score. Oh, oh, never mind. You were you were going. Uh, you were giving an update. Sue from Toledo, Ohio. Sue, I am. Um, <laughs> I am uh, in Northern Ohio as well. I am uh, over in Avon, a little west of Cleveland. So thank you guys for being here so much. Um, again, we are going to um, talk about. Sorry, uh, my co-host got locked out for some reason. So I'm going to shoot him a link to get him in here. I do apologize uh, for that real qu uh, quick, but uh, I'm going to shoot him a link to get in here. So it's not just a show solo show, not just me talking. Right. Um, and uh, we'll get him in here. The Buckeyes take on the Scarlet Knights of Rutgers. How good will the Buckeyes do against um, CJ Str or against a di disciplined defense? You have the whole CJ Stroud dynamic, right? Um, you have a, uh, oh, uh, um, a disciplined defense. Again, you have Greg Schiano, a good football mind. Is CJ Stroud's uh, shoulder, is it healthy? That's a big question going right now. Oh, we got another Toledo in and in hard. John, T wow. Are you, you guys are like right on the Toledo, uh, Michigan, you know, Ohio, Michigan border. I guess you're the true Buckeye fans, the Buckeye fans that started the Toledo war uh, over the, the Toledo strip that actually caused the rivalry. Um, Henderson to break Trey Sermon's record, not against this defense, not against the Rutgers Scarlet Knights. That is a good question. Um, Henderson to break Trey Sermon's record. I don't think so. Not for a single game rushing record. I think if you look back, they re they actually brought back, uh, some of his yards, seven of his yards were supposed to go to Mac master Teague from the big game, uh, a couple games ago, but yeah, I don't think, um, I don't think he'll get uh, to the record. This is going to be a really good defense, right? That he is facing a really good defense um, and not really good disciplined defensive front. They are facing probably with the best linebacker in the big 10 or one of the best in Alakunye Fadakasi. If you can't say that, don't worry. A lot of people can't either. Alakunye Fadakasi from Rutgers is a very good linebacker that will look to, um, get uh, this going, right? Or, or look to shut down the uh, Ohio State run game. So any questions you have, let us know uh, before we get into the show. Um, I do want to bring in some talking points, and it looks like my co-host has made his way in. So real quick, I'm going to add Shane Larson. I'm here, guys. Don't worry yeah. about me. Uh, I was over here stuttering and stammering and trying to do production and everything. Else. <laughs> I'm so sorry, Johnny. I apologize to everybody. I was, uh, yeah, technical difficulties, and I'm still in a cluster over here trying to figure everything out. But we'll get it all figured out. No big deal. Yeah, that's right. And we're just about to get into the bulk of the show. Uh, the big games here, or the the big points here. How will Ohio State do against a seasoned veteran or a seasoned defensive mind in Greg Schiano, a solid uh, uh, front? that gave Michigan some problems in the second half. And will Travion Henderson take the next step? He is 
looks like he's going to be the starter now. I don't know if you've seen this. Mayan Williams is out. Um, so he's going to be the starter again, uh, probably as he should be anyway. But they're going to face a stout defensive front it, again with Alakunye Fadakasi from Rutgers and see if they could shut that down. Other things of note I want to discuss. Will Chris Olave have a bounce back game? I know he got a little, you know, some touches uh, against Akron, but I think the Tulsa game was a, a zero catch game for him. That is something you're not used to seeing. Um, so, Shane, how are you feeling about the uh, the Scarlet Knights matchup? Feeling pretty good about it. Um, all things considered, I, I spent last night kind of looking into the breakdown of both teams. You know, I didn't spend a lot of time watching Rutgers so far this season, but. Uh, I caught their last game last week. I, they're okay. I, I think they are stout. I think Shiano has them hyped up. I think they are ready to rock and roll. They're not scared. They're excited to play this game. That being said, I think Ohio State is starting to feel their, like they're starting to find their rhythm. They're starting to find their stride. And with that, um, do I expect it to be easy? No, I think it'll be a, a tough couple of quarters starting, you know, get, getting the rhythm going. But I, I would expect us to, roll through um i think our offense will hold hold their own and i think our defense is going to have their best game of the season that's that's my opinion all right that is good that is a huge talking point will the defense grow up right they can't i don't expect them to be elite I, honestly at any time in the season i don't expect them to be excuse me very good probably until the end of the season because it just takes time to build you can't go from lost and clueless to really, really good overnight or in a couple weeks, but you can build each and every week. So power five opponent, well coached, well disciplined. Can they, I, I guess what's a win is a win 21 points or less for this defense at this point. That would be a win for me. I, I I'm looking kind of like what Michigan did, right? You're, you're looking at that. I would say a win would be 21 points or less. And that's kind of what Michigan did. And I, and I think that that's where we need to hold, ourselves to right now to try to figure out where we're at the thing is they are completely like there's an emotional turmoil as you guys discussed like you guys have already touched base on this with what was going on is the locker room broken is it not i think we're seeing pan out right before our eyes it's like the wing of the tears right you're, you're the, the, the wheat and the tears it's it's going to be it's splitting we're starting to see what we need to do we need to take you know the drama get the drama out of there uh, a coach carter situation if you will we've seen if you remember the movie Coach Carter, he like takes away. He's like, "Oh, that's our top. Le that's our leading score from last season." Well, then we'll have new leading scores this, and he starts pulling out some of what we would have thought were going to be our stars, and we're trying to put the right people in place. I think that's kind of what's happening. We're getting the emotional side of things, but Ohio State's starting to come to. I think their locker room starting to come together, and I think they will. Yeah, twenty-one points or less for that defense would be a win. I don't think it's going to be fantastic, but I think that's going to be what we see. Is a, it, I don't expect them to give up more than three touchdowns. I really don't. That's that would be a win. I think my final score prediction actually does have that because again, this offense is limited, but it's this defense, right? And then also you have uh, the trick play thing that Rutgers pulled out last year. Since he's playing, since Shiano's playing with house money, um, I don't know if he pulled a lot of trick plays out against Michigan, but I didn't watch the second half very much of that game, but. You know, against Ohio State, he did last year. So, can the dis the defense stay home and be disciplined and and not get tricked by some motion and some window dressing, some halfback passes, that kind of thing? That'll be very interesting as well. Um, we had uh, did you guys post a link to the chat on Twitter? If uh, Twitter also, I did. no, I did not. Please do, Sue. Uh, yeah, I didn't uh, post on Twitter. It's kind of hard to engage with you guys and do the housekeeping and the promotion and all that. So um, please, uh, if any, Shane, if actually, if you can, yep. can you I'm get on it, on guys. That? I'm on it. I'm trying. See, here's the deal. Shane's doing, <laughs> Shane's doing the production. He's double duty right now. He's doing production and co-host. So I'll go, I'll go post it on Twitter. I'll tag. So make sure you guys are following me on Twitter as well at game, at the game time guru. Um, yep. go, go follow me on Twitter, but I'll, I'll also tag uh, Johnny and Corey on there as well. We'll put the link here. I'll follow. So, uh, discussion. again, I wanted to, another big thing is, um, can CJ Stroud progress, right? How's he going to do with, you know, as a guy that seems to be a little nervous at times, is he re nervous all over again because he hasn't played in a while and he heard the whispers and he heard the fan talk 
Uh, is he re nervous because this is going to be, let's face it, any team better than Tulsa seems to make him nervous or even Tulsa. So can he say like, okay, I'm settled now. I can do this. I've practiced. I feel better. I'm a little more healthy. I can take that next step. I want to know what the fans have to say about this. I'm a Stroud fan. Um, and I think people who have followed me kind of know that. So let's see what you guys have to say. Put us, leave a comment here on what you guys got to say with Stroud. I actually don't think he looked too bad in any of the games that he played. He overthrows a couple guys, but uh, the competition that he had to face in Minnesota and Oregon to start the season, and that's his pretty much his college career, you're expecting that. Oregon is a top 10 team in the country, regardless of what people want to say. I've been watching them for years. They are a good team. It's a Pac-12, yada, 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 but they do have one solid you know, team, and that is Oregon. I, I love Stroud. Now, I'm curious more so he has competition, you know, on his, behind his back. He knows that, okay, now we've seen what some of the other quarterbacks can do. Um, the fan base is starting, you know, here's the pressures of playing for a high profile program like Ohio state. It's not just the big games. It's now you got the fan base. That's very loud and sometimes irrational at times, but they are loud and they're opinionated. You've got the competition with solid athletes right behind you. Um, you know, you got, you got some really good quarterbacks right behind you in that quarterback room. So, you got a lot of pressure on your shoulders that a lot of other schools don't necessarily have to deal with. They just have to win football games. And so, you know, is he nervous? Well, Johnny, I think he might be nervous. I think he might have a little bit of pressure on his shoulders. Can he rise to the occasion? I believe he can. I think Stroud's a stud. I think the way that he throws the ball is fantastic. Now, I will say this. Maybe we'll lead into something else. Stroud is the number one option. Here, here we go. What was this one? Your job next oh. year, in my opinion. <laughs> CJ has always been my choice. This will be a good game for him and the receivers. Absolutely. And to that point, thank you for that comment. The receivers. I am not impressed with Olave this year. He has not helped out Stroud and any guys that are young. Like You have to take that role. He has had three drops that I can think of off the top of my head that were detrimental to drives. Three drops that were right in his hands. If you're going to be a top pick in the NFL draft, and you think you can play at the next level, you can't do that, especially with a young quarterback who is trying to build confidence. That's and he didn't do it before this year. It's kind of odd. Know. Garrett it's Wilson weird, right? even dropped a view. Yeah. Uh-huh. Um, yeah, I am not as big of a – this is good that we have us both on here because I'm not as big of a Stroud fan. Um, <laughs> mostly – well, mostly validated by MJ's comment here, the Tulsa game. Um, but – yeah, the other game struggles, you look and you say, well, the times he wasn't very good. Well, he's a redshirt freshman first start. The other red f- shirt freshmen in the country weren't exactly world beaters either. So you kind of build in some struggles. But then you, you couple that zone six has had the, a couple games ago or last game before last game, they had the fourth highest drops in the country. Uh, so that is, uh, you know, off putting. Um, so we will see like, but there's something – the Tulsa game, it was like, how did you regress, dude? How did you sail an eight-yard out four feet over somebody's head? How did you How did you miss a post route behind and long? How did you how, – how are you How are you not able to do anything? Um, and was that nerves? Was that snowball effect of, oh, I'm a little sore? And that throw didn't go right. And I know you got these guys, you know what I mean? Is it just the he's snowball? He's listening effect? to you, Johnny. That's the problem is he's, he's listening probably, to your channel. He's here on our show. And he, I didn't say this stuff publicly before the Tulsa game though. Uh, that's true. You were actually pretty quiet about you were, you were more rational and like, let me see things pan and behind this be, behind the scenes. I was probably chirping, right? Yeah. I he was, was probably yeah, chirping. Johnny was cursing in our text thread. He never does that. And no, I'm just kidding. Um, <laughs> Yeah, I, I don't know, man. I don't think Stroud's that bad. Like, I want people to realize, like, go back and watch Fields against Northwestern when Fields was there. Like, Fields had his fair share of, and he was, everyone was just loved Fields, but he had his fair share of games where there were times where when he was forced to make throws and windows, he didn't always make the best throw. And there were times where he elevated his game, and he's obviously an NFL quarterback mm-hmm. right now. So, you know, and Stroud is so young. We put so much pressure on these kids that are so young. Like, I yeah, mean, he, think about yourself he really when you're is. like, 18, 19 years old, and you're like putting that position. Ah, yeah. Let's see who, he, who John he says is. What? I will say oh, ahead, he's the same age, or I think second year of college, albeit a COVID year built in there this year, as Justin Fields was his first year starting for the Buckeyes. But I think we're just spoiled because of how good yes. Justin was. And Justin was somewhat protected by Ryan Day and J.K. Dobbins and that great offensive line. 
that it's kind of a little bit of the Cleveland Browns Baker Mayfield thing. You just run the ball and run the ball. I'm talking 2019 here so much that you make 19, 20, 21 throws a game and you're not forced to do a whole lot and you can look really good in limited throws. So um, that helped him a lot. CJ was asked to throw the you know the whole playbook, bang, bang, bang. The Oregon game, he had to try to win again with a fairly bad defense. And that can expose some things if you're asked to do a ton and you're just not ready for that yet. Um, so I give him a little bit of pass there. The Tulsa game, I don't, there's just not a lot I can say, you know, unless that was injury. What's this? CH, CJ Strouds plays like he ate a two pound cheeseburger in the locker room before the game. That's, that's, that's great, Bill. I, I, I don't even know what that means, but it's funny. I, th- that's the thing is like, you would know it, but if you start to think about it, it's actually like a perfect, <laughs> that's a perfect description of it. Cause you start thinking, you're like, that is actually kind of funny. Yeah. Um, I love John. Thank you. The kid will be fine. I don't see us being in the playoff this year, so it doesn't matter. Just entertain us till we get to yours next year. No, I'm, I, I'm with you, John. I don't, I don't see us in the playoff currently right now either. I, and that's mainly our defense. I actually think our offense is doing what it needs to do to, to win games, to be honest, but our defense can't do anything. But yeah, it could be Stratus a playoff team. Yeah. It, we're we're um, solid. Stratus carry. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, even I won't go that far. Even I won't go that far. Uh, starting to become a little more skeptical about day has been questioning some decisions of his lately. MJ, let us know what those decisions are. Let us know what those decisions are that you are questioning, because I, I, I would, I would really want to uh, hear that. Um, Here's something I want to touch on. Mayan Williams and Tyreek Smith are out. I don't know why. Tyreek Smith's getting to be a little bit of a disappointment for me. Even if it's injury, he had a nice season last season. Even if it's an injury, it's still disappointing that the guy's never healthy. I'm not blaming him. I'm just saying it is disappointing because I really looked for big things from him this year. Um, And Mayan Williams, so it, it seems he's gotten... So people were like, hey, I, you know, Williams should leapfrog Teague. Williams should leapfrog Teague. And now you're seeing like Henderson should leap. Now Henderson's leapfrogging Williams. And I don't know if Mayan is, this is speculation by me, 100% speculation. Okay. We put that out there. I don't know if he's handling it so well. Last game, the reason he missed the game is because he missed a practice during the week. Like just from what I understand, just missed a practice. <laughs> That's not good. Um, and then you look at this week, he's out again. And I didn't see anything on an injury report. You know what I mean? It's not like Rutgers is so bad that you can just rest a guy. You know what I mean? This team would be fine with Master Teague and Travion Henderson. But this is not a game that you just rest a guy because, he's eh, you know, let's save the legs. He's your backup at this point. You don't save your backup's legs in a game like this. Shane, am I right to say this kind of screams discipline? Yeah, I think your speculation's right on point. Um, I'm trying to be as respectful and understanding as possible without knowing all the details. But sure. like I said, I think the locker room, it goes back to what I said earlier. There's some some guys that... Just weren't used to the competition, man. They weren't used to going through adversity. They were used to just flying high. And um, you're seeing the pressure on. Uh, they're facing adversity. And some guys are handling themselves like champions and uh, like solid athletes. And some of them are acting like young college students and that haven't ever been through adversity before. So I, I wouldn't be a, I wouldn't be surprised if what you were just mentioning uh is kind of what's going on. I, I just think it's kind of odd. It's just it's just very odd how some of these big name players you would think that uh, would be able to handle themselves well are kind of starting to crumble. And I want to also take a second and apologize. As I was, I actually tagged the wrong Corey in the post on oh, Twitter. Oh, it's fine. I retweeted it too. <laughs> so I'm, I'm glad you retweeted it, but I apologize to, to Buckeye Corey. I was trying to type in Corey, and just so you guys know, I, t- I tagged the wrong Corey in there. Hey, but, Buckeye uh, Corey's getting some free love. Dude, that's dude. that's complimentary on the house from Scarlet and great there, Buckeye Corey. Um, well, he retweeted it too, so uh, props to him, man. I, I mean, yeah. hey, he's like, hey, I'm in here. Cool. Buckeye talk. The let's link, go. Yeah, the link's out there for everybody at, at the Game Time Guru and at Scarlet Great JL. You will find us there, and you can retweet the link. Please subscribe to this channel, like, and comment. Um, this is what MJ says. Made me angry that he wouldn't even try McCord against Tulsa when Stroud was terrible is the main one that comes to mind. All right. Let me – maybe you'll buy this from me. 
MJ, I am with you that I think CJ terribly struggled in that game, and I wanted to see somebody more. I'm I'm be honest. I raised my hand. I wanted to see somebody more after the Oregon game, not because Stroud was a lost cause, but but because I just wondered if somebody there had the extra gear. Not because at all I thought Stroud was a lost cause. In the in the Tulsa game, I was like, okay, this might be a lost cause. I understand why Ryan Day is not as reactionary though and didn't bench him because he clearly picked him for some reason, practice, whatever that he thought he was the best. And then when he seen him struggle, his thought was probably, we're going to win this game anyway, it's Tulsa, which that got a little dangerous. <laughs> but also, if my guy is struggling, he needs to get better. The only way I can get him better is live game reps. And man, if I keep him in, and he makes a nice throw or two or three, and builds his confidence, problem solved, we've built going forward. If I bench him, I don't have a uh, uh, guarantee that McCord or Stroud will be better. They're cold, and they haven't been getting first-team reps in practice, and that can hurt a court. I think it absolutely does. Um, so I think he, that was just him trying to make the best of a situation. So while I understand your point, yeah, you want to see somebody else as a guy's really struggling, I think that was his thought process, and that's why I give him – a little bit of a pass. Valid, valid uh, comment though. Valid comment and uh, solid discussion on that. Lisa, or sorry, Lisa Sue. While while we're at it, what's the deal with Banks? Same deal. Not an injury report and did not play. Now it looks like he's lost his starting spots. Spot. I did not know. Uh, I did not know he was on the. Uh, are Are you talking about prior game? Banks, something's going on with Banks. I don't know if he's on the report for this game or not, as he won't play. Somebody let me know. Is, is Banks on the unavailable list? A couple things. Seven Banks is absolutely not as good of a corner as Denzel Burke or Cam Brown. So, yeah, he's lost his starting, and it, as he should. Now, Brown seems to... Now, Brown's actually... I've seen him limping and stuff in the Oregon game, so I see why he may be getting sat out to rest. But Banks... Okay... So can he, does he, is he a rotational corner? Do you rest him? Do you let him try and see if he can take Cam Martinez? Looks like the slot corner cover safety, nickel, whatever they want to call it. That looks like that might be his spot now. Can they put seven banks there? Or, this is what I would like to see happen. happen. Bryson Shaw actually really struggles at that one high safety. And can banks play? He's a big, thicker looking corner, right? Sometimes you see him, you're like, that, is that a safety? Is that a... Uh, Sam linebacker, he's a big dude. I would love to see if um, if if he could maybe make a position switch because Burke and we're fine with Burke and Brown. This all this all this stuff going on with the defense, the corners are not part of it. Um, so uh, that is a good question. Great show, God bless me <laughs> and our Bennett. Hey, thank you. Appreciate that, Robert. Appreciate that those kind thoughts. Um, I don't know anything. Uh, oh, sorry. I thought it was about. He was, he's available today. Okay. So he's available today. I think maybe an injury and maybe he's just not, he's just not, uh, it's just not the, he's just not one of the top two corners. <laughs> Here we go. Back to quarterback position. CJ is fine. Defense needs to play Ohio State football team effort and coach. They don't look ready. Play football. Yep. You'd like to step up uh, the corner play. Denzel Burt is the truth. He absolutely is. Dude, the dude got his stripe pulled like a week before the season. And I think it was the Tulsa game. They tested him over and over and over. And man, he can play, Shane. That dude is, can you ever seen that? He was never supposed to be on the field. I think right. the Banks injury got him on the field this soon. You know, they would... Never by design would you put a freshman out there on an island like this. And I think it actually worked to his favor. Uh, I don't think he was a five-star recruit either. That's pretty awesome. He's a great story this year. They put him out there. He rose to the occasion. Um, and sometimes when you have that nothing-to-lose mentality, like, hey, what, <laughs> what were the expectations? It can really, really help you out. And I think he has most certainly rose to the occasion. And I am a big fan of Burke. Yeah. And I will say I think – 
I think Cam Brown's great too. And I think Cam Brown didn't get tested much in Tulsa because they either he was either locking his guy up or whatever. I think one time they tried him, he did break the pass up. So um score predictions. A little early for a score prediction. I will try to come back to that. Uh all these blue chippers need to play hard. Corners look great. Yep. I agree. Um, watching Wisconsin jump around is awesome. We can't sell at the stadium this year. Uh, yeah, prices are part of that. Um, t- team being a little bit down, I think, is also part of that. Zach Smith had a cool theory was because it's it's absolutely well. I'm a I'm a little bit of an anomaly. I could have got tickets to last week's game through Vet Ticks for fifteen bucks. I didn't, but again. You know, I have a I, I work a lot. I'm two hours away. I have a wife and baby. I don't get to see a lot during the week. So I'm a little bit of an anomaly. Um, I think maybe Zach's theory was during the COVID season, I've never been a huge go to the game guy, partly because of finances, partly because I haven't lived in Ohio uh, the last dozen years or so. Um, I think a lot of the people that were go to the game people because of COVID found really cool ways to watch the game. And then yeah. they see the re instant replay and you get to eat wings right <laughs> right there on your couch and you get to pause and you, you know what I mean? Stuff you can't do live. And I think they're like, yeah, I'm gonna save 300 bucks and watch it at home, right? Let me let me touch base on that too. I want as as we're talking about this, guys, <clears throat> it's interesting that Ohio State's running into this problem. As from Boise, um, I'm from Boise. I'm a Boise State alumni. Well, what do you mean? Alumnus, alum, whatever. I don't care. That's I'm a Boise State grad. Uh, and that is the problem we have ran into at Boise State for years and years and years. And part of it's because the the time of the game and all sorts of things. This is way prior to COVID. And this is an issue I always had um, as a season ticket holder at Boise State. I go to every single game and I was like, oh, you're not a true fan if you don't go to the stadium. And we only have 36,000 seats at our stadium. And it's not so like there's only 36,000 true fans. <laughs> well, I mean, maybe like 28 by that, lo- by that logic. Right. 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 And so we never fill the stadium here. Um, and I was blown away. Like when I went to Nebraska, I was blown away when I went to the shoe. Uh, when I, wa- when I was able to catch the Ohio state, Oklahoma game a few years back when uh, Baker torched us. The thing is though, I was looking and I did a lot of studying on this uh, at, to Johnny's point, the ticket prices, for the, the median income within Columbus and the surrounding areas is absolutely insane. It's asinine. I cannot believe like the ticket prices at face value before it even hits a, a third party market face value. Ticket prices are insane. When you compare it to the median income for a household around the Columbus area, it is absolutely ridiculous. In 2017, I think the median income was just, over, it was just below $50,000 in a household. And you're, you're charging upwards of, 100 plus 120 bucks a ticket for some of those games. And some of them are even more like 180. So anyways, yeah, that's one of them. And then to Johnny's point as well, like during the COVID season, people starting to figure out like, Oh, it's, it's better to watch my friends here on the big screen and I can eat my wings and I can chill. And then, you know, if I want to go, you know, to the bathroom, the comfort of my own home, I can do that during the middle of the game, things like that. I think that's turned a lot of football fans into house cats including yeah. myself I, I love it so especially if you're a like going to a game still probably a lot of fun it's oh, yeah. just you go into a lot of games you don't have to now you know what i mean and it, that, it almost the, turns into a project man and that's the prices cool. are not that's 120 for a bad seat shane you you can easily spend a grand a ticket at ohio stadium you get club seats i mean oh yeah it, it, it if you get out of the end zone and out of the corners where the che- seats are cheaper you're spending a lot of money. You might spend, I mean, you, I've seen tickets for 300 bucks in C-Deck, I'm pretty sure, before. It's it's insane what they charge. Now, I know those prices are dr- dropping a lot, but it's still not, I mean, it's still not steals. And anytime it is like a $48 ticket, it's C-Deck in the corner. Right. You know, so do you want to, do you want to drive, spend 20 in parking, walk a half hour, not, you know, Stand in line 34 minutes to pee, um, you know, <laughs> and then get a okay view of the game with a struggling defense. And so you're going to spend, you know, gas, tickets, everything, concessions. If there's more than, if there's two or more of you, you're spending well over a hundred bucks. Oh, and 100%. you're like, and I'm just, even that's for a bad seat against a bad team. Yeah. You know what I mean? And and, and I and I, I want everyone to know, like it is there is a different energy. Oh, I spent eight hundred for two tickets to the organ. You That's know it. what? That would have been worth it to me if I was hey, going to one game that year. Vegas, yeah, I it, yes. Yes. Here's the other thing. 
tick i have a buddy that helps me with like ticket prices he tells me like hey you have to wait this that and the other i was walking i i was doing the zach smith braxton miller tailgate so i didn't i didn't go to the game i was in columbus though and while i was walking to the tailgate right before the game i had probably 8 a.m 8 30 a.m noon kickoff could have got club seats 50 yard line for 200 bucks a pop because they were having that much trouble filling the stadium oh, wow. don't buy your tickets early uh especially this year um now they went back up shortly thereafter but it wait for tickets especially this year right now i'll do it. you know what while we're here look at this hard-hitting content while we're here I happen to have this magic square that can pull up anything in the world. I don't know if you guys have ever gotten one of these magic squares. Uh, Apple makes them. Ohio State football upcoming game. Um, no, I don't want. Let's go away. Now this is now nah, that's that's a Rutgers game. I, I it would have been so much better if it was a home game, but a Rutgers game, two tickets. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> you're getting them as cheap as tw- there's a lot of twenty some dollar tickets there. If any of you guys are in New Jersey, um, with uh, who Bill Faulkner, who says he just goes to the game with catheter, I went to a Michigan or a, a Ohio State Maryland game with him in Maryland. That was a cheap game. But if you if you want to do a home game, the next game against Maryland, if I punch in two tickets, right, you know you're still looking at 163 bucks for a deck 50 yard line. What what, what what app are you using on that? Is that before uh, fees? StubHub. Yeah. yeah so there's going to be a fees. little bit. A little bit of pop. so 116 bucks for C deck kind in the corner. That's not a great deal, guys. 115 that's 230 dollars plus fees for C decks in, in the corner against Maryland. However, don't buy them just yet, D- don't buy them to the day of the game. I have a friend, my friend that helps me out, he's he shows up to the game without the tickets. So that would stress uh, me out though. Yeah, I mean, and I know a lot of people are coming in, and and to Sue's point, hasn't it always pretty much been this way? Yeah, but like, and I'll I'll go back to what John. Yeah, but COVID, COVID, but yeah. COVID showed people they don't have to do it anymore. I don't have to set money on fire to have fun watching the game. No, hundred percent. And then you're like, oh, I don't have to spend. It's literally a full day. Pro- like even here at Boise State, I, I went to the Oklahoma State Boise State game a couple weeks ago, and it's like oh, you're like the whole day you're planning it all out. So it's it's a full day project just to go. How about them Bengals? How about them Bengals? Cincinnati. I was just, I, I live about 20 miles from Cleveland. I was just at the, the Meyer and Avon. Uh, and guess what? They had the Bengals jackets, full price, right? Browns, Browns gear on sale. Changing of the guard. I don't know. I don't know. Joe Burrow, best quarterback in the AFC North, though. That's that's proven fact by science. It's science. Listen to the science, guys. Anyways, I want to get back to Buckeye talk. Um, this is something I want your guys' thoughts. Henderson for Heisman. I don't know who is dumb. This is a weird year. Yeah. So I'm not even going to be a homer here. This is a weird year. No one I know of is dominating football like he is. Now, People say, well, he didn't get a lot of carries Minnesota game. He still had a 70-yard catch and run. So Pat, so he probably still had netted over 100 yards of offense. Had, what, 300 or something, 270, something like that. Uh, against Tulsa. Whatever he went and did against Akron. If he becomes the bell cow guy, I think you're... And, and defenses aren't stacking the box. Now, I think some of them might. He's absolutely... Who who else? Spencer Rattler, I think, was the front runner. I don't. Yeah, uh, no. Uh, he was dropped. before the season, but yeah. Uh, Bryce Young, okay, he's putting up a lot of numbers, but it's it's against bad competition. He was not, you know, lighting up the deep throws. He's struggling like other guys are. DJ Uangalele, absolutely not. So y- maybe you look at former Buckeye receiver Jamison Williams. I want your comments, yes or no. Do you believe Henderson can be? Let's not even say win it. Will he be in New York for the ceremony this year? Um, will he, will Travion Henderson be in the ceremony this year? Shane, that any least, who who else would you put above him right now besides Jameson Williams or or Bryce Young? I was gonna say Bryce Young. Um, man, it's tough. It's a tough year. It's like you said, it's a weird year. Um, See, I'm thinking is Oregon CJ Verdell going? I know he got his stats padded against us. Do you think that'll continue? No, 
No, he's not going to. I mean, they're not playing top-notch competition right now when they get into conference play. But, I, I mean, he I, again, though, I guess I, I shouldn't say that. I mean, that could very well just be a situation like Henderson where we're he might tear it up for the rest of the year, and it's a weird season, so he doesn't have a lot of competition. I do think Young, though, will be at the – uh, The he'll stats be will at least be there. Yeah, the stats will at least be there. Before the last game, I think he was two for 11 on deep balls. And you look at some other stuff, he wasn't throwing the left side of the field. They were really protecting him. But, you know, Heisman voters don't look at that. Someone just said Bajon Robinson, former Buckeye uh, silent commit, is having a, a heck of a year. I don't know. Let me check that out. I would believe it. Um, is this just this season 70 carries? Uh, six point two a, a carry, which is really nice. Four thirty six and five touchdowns. Yeah, he's on he's on pace for uh, maybe eighteen hundred yards plus. So that may be. It's hard to do it on a team that's going to struggle that much, but it can be done. Lamar Jackson did it with the Louisville team that lost uh, some games late and stuff. So um, I will say, yeah, maybe Bijan. Bijan should get an invite if he continues this. Talking about I, watching. Go ahead. Oh. Do you mind if I have a touch base on this real quick? Because I was pulling this up. I, do you mind if I say something else go, on this? Go, 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 I want to know what the I want to know what the fans have to say as well. So if you're if you're on here, just yeah, chat with us. But I was pulling this up to look at after week four the front runners of the Heisman. Um, as a Blitnikoff Award voter, I'm always paying attention to the receivers, which is also another weird year. But this is just to go to Johnny's point of how weird of a year this is. I mean, you got Matt Coral from Ole Miss, front runner. Bryce Young, as we already discussed, you got Ritter from Cincy. Rattler is still in discussion. Uh, Daniels from Georgia. Then you got Travion, and he's coming in there. CJ's even in the discussion. All these quarterbacks, Malik Willis from Liberty. You got Verdell that's way down, but like you even got Anthony Brown, the quarterback from Oregon. So this is the competition that he's facing. So the the fact of the matter is Henderson's not that far off from uh, taking over, like leaping to the front of that list, in my opinion, because it's I only one bad game it. away from everybody else. Yeah, 100%. He's got to get an invite. Um, Bill Robin it Robin now it's just tweeted. Just saw CJ Stroud throw a couple of balls as Buckeyes warm up. Cord and Miller have been throwing for a while while Stroud stretched his arms, but Stroud did throw. Hmm. So do we still ha do we have a game time decision? Um yeah, I don't know. Lindsay is a, a diehard Buckeye fan. I wanted to get her in here. She's a diehard Buckeye fan, and she's always active on Twitter. So I wanted to um, bring this in. Alave, she wants some Alave Heisman talk. A um, couple drops this season. Um, I think that it could have been, but it's hard with... A, what I'm about to say is going to sound anti-CJ Stroud. It's not. It's hard to have a receiver when it with a, a redshirt freshman because you have struggles built in when you're that young. That's not anti-CJ Stroud. That's just redshirt freshman. It's it's hard to get them there. You know what I mean? Unless you're running a lot of fly sweets and, and, and bubble screams and stuff. I, Jamison Williams is able to do that because he's got return game, right? He's, he's a special teams guy, and he's took a few deep balls to the house. I also think Garrett Wilson is so dang good. Um, this yeah. guy is probably going to get drafted higher. And that's not at this point you're taking one A and one B, but he was definitely a high rated recruit. He's you know insane vertical leap, insane route running. Um, it's it would be really hard for Olave to get in there in those drops, and then that zero catch game I think might eliminate him. But he's still he should probably be in a Bolitnikov finalist because he's so dang good. Um, yeah. I think you should have two Bolitnikov finalists. You'll you'll see them come up in the list. Blitnikov's got all the the list coming out, and I'm watching them. Are you Olave a Blitnikov voter? Yeah, I am. You are. Yeah, so I'm a Blitnikov voter, and and, and you Olave's actually there. take it serious. I do take it serious. I wa I watch games when the lists come out. I I go and I watch games. Whereas you're not necessarily. I talked to Zach Smith here on the show about that before. You don't even have to do that. You just put you just click a button. So it's all yeah. But I do take it seriously because I actually enjoy being part of the experience. But I'm relatively young. It's only my third year voting. So and. and who do you like so far on that list? Man, it's tough because right now there's really there's really no front runners. I mean, I love I think Olave's right there. Granted, his drops in critical situations will pull him out, but like I mean, Ohio State's receivers are probably the front runners in the country, and I'm being dead serious about that. That's not biased information, that's being dead serious there. You know, you got Wilson and Olave, who probably are the most talented, in my opinion. But again, it is a very weird year, and it's gonna be very hard to vote. I'm just gonna be honest.
Yeah. Well, you got to let it play out, but at least yeah. you're watching already and not just letting the media tell you who to vote for. Like that's don't, <laughs> don't you think award voters is the biggest thing, a tank of group tank, you know, biggest it's just group think, right? Like a hundred percent. Yeah. Um, my best male friend. Wow. That's let's not label people with gender suit. I'm just kidding. Uh, is a, <laughs> is a Heisman voter. I pick his brain. Wow. Sue, I would be interested. Does he have a front runner? Is he kind of like Shane where it's just really tough right now? It's just really tough to pick limited and no one's really just, uh, and also there's this September curse, right? Usually if you're a front runner in September, you almost never win it. It seems like it. I, I remember all the way back to the Geno Smith days and, and stuff like that. Um, so Shane, do you think I, let's get into score predictions. We go 40 minutes. I'm going to get into score predictions, right? Okay. I'm going to tell you what I think. Um, I think that CJ Stroud or Kyle McCord or Jack Miller, all are young. This is a disciplined defense. Therefore, sometimes it's not about you being bad. If you struggle, this is what Shane, you'll know this name. Chael Sonnen, uh, MMA guy, he once said this in sports. He once said, you know, people ask what went wrong at the press conference. You lose a fight, right? And he said, sometimes it's not about what you did wrong. It's about what the other guy did right, right? Yeah, two. Shannon Sharp said when he used to get mad or you get yelled at because he missed a block on a safety or something, he'd say, hey, you know, that guy got paid too. He's a pro too. He's studying film too, right? I, didn't, You know, so... This is not anti-Ohio State. All Whoever plays at quarterback today, I expect to see some struggles, and I expect to see some stalled drives because they're facing a disciplined defense and because they are young. It's just going to happen. So I couple that with the defense giving up a few frustrating guy drives because this is football and they're Division One athletes again. You'll give up a little bit, just like on offense, we'll struggle a little bit. But improvement overall, 31-14 Buckeyes. That's my score prediction. Wow. Okay. Just so you guys know, Johnny and I didn't talk about this before. Um, no, we didn't. We were chatting. So um, I was going through, it's funny, I was looking at uh, the post on YouTube about the score predictions and checking some of the comments out on that uh, that we had, like 35-28 Buckeyes, Stroud plays like a washing, walking trash can, and again, the defense still struggles. But, hey, wait, I wait, this, who said that? So, so this was a post from oh, I four hours ago here. when you did oh. the predict the score in the comments, a little post on the channel. So mm -hmm. anyway, got a couple people coming through Yeah, uh, with, with uh, some comments, but... Here's what I think. I'm right there with you. I think it's going to be a little bit of a run-heavy attack um, from the Buckeyes to start the game, which is not a bad thing, but that does run the clock. So I wouldn't expect a ton of points in the first half of the game. That's just my thoughts right there, at least from the offense. Uh, I do think it's going to be a run-heavy attack to try to settle everybody down, whoever's playing quarterback, settle them down so that they can then – here's where Ohio State's lethal is when they can – use the run and you know play action or rollouts to get their receivers in space. When you get Olave and Wilson and everybody in space, that's when they dominate because you get them in space, they can break away from the defender. It's an easier throw typically speaking and you can make those passes that are, you know, down the field and start stretching the field down. So, first half can be run heavy. I think it will help them find their rhythm. I think they win 38 to 20. That's my prediction is a 38 to 20 victory from Ohio state, mainly in the second half when they pull away. But I would tell you this, I'm not, Shiano has this weird energy about him, right? So like Rutgers has a weird energy and that's why they're, they're a weird team. I always said the same thing about Minnesota and PJ Fleck, row the bow, yada, yada, yada. He's got this energy and he gets them hyped up and they can execute too. But I think Shiano, like for some reason, he has not only the energy, but he understands how to build a winning culture. And it mm -hmm. starts on the defensive side of the ball. Whereas PJ Fleck was more of an offensive mindset when he was at Western. So like, was it Western? Yeah, it was Western, right? Yeah. When he was at Western Michigan. Western Michigan. Yeah. Yeah. So like Shiano, that's where I'm a little bit concerned. Cause if you can start on that defense side of the ball and like start making the stops and getting the turnovers or getting whatever, you know, that you need, and then it's a dog fight. And then it's just yeah. a matter of who has the mental stability to finish the game. But that being said, I think Ohio State is starting to find their rhythm. They're starting to come mm -hmm. to they're 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 here. Thirty eight to twenty is what I predict. Yeah, Oopsmack says uh, twenty eight seventeen. 
by by the look of his uh, uh, profile picture there, are you Oopsnack? Are you a uh, deer hunter? And if so, comment where from and where you like to hunt. I just I'm gonna throw that in there. I like to get to know the fans. And I, uh, Bill says ninety nine nothing. Uh, Rutgers, um, obviously <laughs> a lot of faith. Julian's got big time faith in the Buckeyes. Forty two six. I really hope you don't gamble. Um, I don't. I don't suggest anybody does, but I certainly hope you don't, Julie. <laughs> <laughs> um, this is something though that I think is a good point. Trey first half half spread it out second. I don't think you can. If if Greg Shano knows Greg Shiano knows football, and we know he does. Zach Smith said on his analysis this week that Greg is obsessed with fundamentals and details and little things, almost to the point where he might be diagnosably uh, OCD and need some help. Um, the, if I was a defensive coordinator and this is, you could take how much I know about X's no football and put it inside this watch, right? I would say you load that box. You do not let Travion Henderson beat you. You force CJ Stroud to beat you under pressure, especially if he's hurt, you hit him, especially if it's the, the other young quarterbacks, pressure, 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 show me you can beat me. I would have to think with what I know. Greg Schiano knows that too, and he's going to try to to go that uh, as well. Um, will Ohio State play a quarterback that actually shows up? Maybe. I mean, that's that's the big that's the big question, right? Um, that is that is what we've been talking about. Logan to Jackson, my backyard. Okay, so you're in Southern Ohio. Uh, Oops, Mac talking about deer hunting. So um, a little bit about me. I grew up in Southern Ohio too, and my parents deer hunt right out their backyard west of you about halfway from jackson to cincinnati um so good to know you i i love the southern ohio in shane because it is a forgotten area of ohio that's why i'm one of the reasons i'm such a big joe burrow fan because he's from not too far from jackson there and i just i love the every, everybody says you know columbus or uh, cleveland when they talk about ohio or northern ohio you know i love the forgotten pieces and the forgotten part of the uh, of the geography, and and always have love for both my home cities of Dayton and uh, Southern Ohio. Here I am uh, learning all about Ohio right now. I love yeah, it. well, <laughs> when you come up sometime, I'm going to give you the tour. You Can't know, wait. you always have. Um, again, so Shane, what do you think about that though? Like, do you think this is a huge point? Ohio State should absolutely expect a, a loaded box, a lot of pressure. I hope Ryan Day has his blitz beaters and his man beaters drawn up. I, I think this might be a game where Buckeyes really struggle in the first half, and Ryan Day does his thing where he figures out what you were doing on defense, and he just blows you off the field in the second half. He's yeah. one of the best halftime offensive adjusters I've ever seen. Um, do you also think that you're going to be faced a loaded, a loaded box and a lot of pressure and no I mean, run game? You're going to face a loaded box, blitz packages, all sorts of things that are going to throw off a young quarterback for that matter. And, you know, a young running back as talented as Henderson is, like if he's in there, he's yeah. And you're going to have to. And this is sometimes where Day, you know, to a fault, he wants to prove his point. And Urban was the same way. Prove his point. He's going to have the line in there. He's going to do his thing. We were talking about Stroud against Tulsa. Like he wants to he wants to let them fight through it and learn and learn and learn. And then he makes the adjustment in the second half, hopefully. Um I do expect to see that. It is is it a concern? Kinda. I, I do think we'll struggle to find a rhythm in the first half. But I do think we're we're at the point now where these quarterbacks can make some throws, slant passes to these receivers who can get some separation that will be fine. But I wouldn't be surprised if we get a couple. You know, they get one or two turnovers on us, um, or turnovers on downs, and we get stalled drives. You know, and that's just what's probably going to happen. But I do think we pull away. We're a better team, but hands down. I, I'm going to be interested in seeing that. You guys, you're going to be like Johnny and Shane, Nostradamus, when you see all this heavy pressure in the first half. Um, the Bitcoin podcast says, what if uh, Buckeyes for the win, what will it mean the unlikely happens and we lose? People will start really questioning Ryan Day, even unfairly. Um, that will happen. Uh, I will take away Shane's invite to my house because he'll probably Shane's a, a really good boy. He'll probably beat me up. Um, people don't know this about Shane. He's a skilled boxer and he's about six two two twenty and like a cardio King. He's not a, a mobile guy. So, um, I'm probably going to be, uh, hiding from Shane for a while. Um, uh, let's see. Uh, you know, I think 
everything's on the table if you lose to Rutgers. I think big changes, right? And and uh, obviously the coaching staff wouldn't be as reactionary as we would be. But um, I don't think it will. And look, and people will start questioning Matt Barnes probably unfairly because he's taken a kind of pseudo taken over the defense. But he you gave him lemons to work with, right? You can only do so much mid season. It's like Alex Grinch at Oklahoma. His first year, they were like 80th in pass defense, and people are like. Look, Grinch isn't good. And I'm like, well, they were 120th last year. In the last two years, they've been far better than Ohio State in defense. Um, so that's what happens if, if Ohio State win or loses. Shane, it's almost unimaginable, though, isn't it? Uh, I think there could be. A, there's a shot that this could be a game. Um, I don't see us losing, though. I don't see us losing. We have the better athletes, better talent, all that stuff we've dis- discussed. I If the unimaginable happened, yes, I'll echo everything that Johnny just said. But just remember, guys, like this is the one thing I want to tell the fan base and I'm not judging anybody. But like if you're a business and your business is tanking in the middle of a year, like you can't just wipe the whole thing clean. It's not that that's not realistic. You can't just wipe all the managers and everything and just hope that you can just pick up and everything will be dandy. Typically speaking, you'll wait till the end of the year. You'll make some adjustments, maybe lay off a few people and, and adjust a few things. And then you hope for the next year. So like just so you know, like we're calling for everyone's heads if there were a loss. Like, come on now, like that's not going to help the situation. Um, you got to be able to find ways. And that's, that's where day, I think this might be the first time in his young career that he's going to have to be faced with some situations, but hopefully we just see Ohio state start to find their rhythm and we have the right pieces in place. And we just go to town when 38 yeah. to 20. So my prediction's correct. Yeah. I want to get to this real quick and back to the pregame talk. Is it your job next year if he just plays well in camp? No, it's not. I'm not saying it's not, but it's definitely not just is. Just because there's a lot of hype around the kid. He throws a nice ball, great sidearm. He's not very big. He needs to grow. He needs to mature. He needs to fill his body out. He's struggling to keep up with all the information. I've even heard he's got a back injury right now, and that's why he wasn't dressed last game, et cetera, et cetera. No, it's not a guarantee that he's going to be – three or four really good guys who are ahead of him physically and ahead of him in the playbook and the schematics. And Kyle McCord's more talented than CJ Stroud. I think he didn't beat him out. CJ had a year advance on him and look, it's just not a guarantee. You're Quinn Ewers can't go beat out Aaron Rodgers right now. Aaron Rodgers was a three-star recruit. There's more to it than that. Now, could he? Sure. Could he, but it's just not this it's not that it's just is his job. And like, honestly, I think this question needs to be posed year after next. Cause that's when he would yeah. be a real threat. I mean, he's sitting pretty with his pockets though. He, he's got his cash. In, oh, yeah. so he's okay. Either way, man. hundred <laughs> percent. And, and I, props to I, him for it too. Yeah. Props to him. People hate on the decision. They say, look, my, my dad would have absolutely thrown me out of the house and told me, get your butt to Ohio state. If you can be set for life, skip your senior year, you may never play football professionally. You're always one hit away from not playing. Um, go, go, go get that bag. Um, Michael Valentin. So, oh yeah, Lindsay's answering the questions. So, uh, somebody on Twitter tweeted out CJ's in the back of or in back into the front of the quarterback line and throwing in warmups. So maybe he just needed to get loosened up. You hate that though. You hate that you're going in to the situation where the guy just keeps needing more work to see if he's going to be okay. When Ryan day doesn't even act like the injury is that serious. Um, and it's not like, I think that CJ is just miles better than the other two that you can't sit him if he's hurt, but getting first team reps matters. And I think CJ's taking the bulk of the first team reps and that gives him, you know, that's the guy you want out there. Um, makes me nervous. We really need a quarterback, but maybe four years. <laughs> You know, I, I think next year is really looks to be a solid yeah. year for the Buckeyes. A lot of these young players who have supplanted the older players, you're seeing that switch, right? You're seeing people switch into Cam Martinez and Steel Chambers. Steel Chambers isn't young anymore, but he was thrust above older guys. Cam Martinez, Denzel Burke, you see these guys getting thrust in the action. Cody Simon, I think I think you'll see a, a, a lot of, um, I guess – uh, I just think uh, next year Ohio State might be the favorite. All right, um, <laughs> so some confidence on the on the Buckeyes. Ah, eh, Rutgers playing really good this year. Ah, eh, I mean they beat they got beat by an average Michigan team. 
They they you know, played well against Michigan. I will give him that. I, I did comment, but they here. still lost to a fifteenth to twentieth ranked team. You know, I mean, yeah. And, and here's the thing: I don't think Rutgers is bad. So to Michael's point, and I appreciate Michael putting the comments here because I, I I commented down here below as well. Yeah, Rutgers has played well, but there is a legitimate argument about the competition. I usually will like I, I kind of analyze that competition argument sometimes before I just throw it out there. But yeah, Rutgers check their competition this year. They haven't really been tested until Michigan. Ohio State started with one of the toughest front two games, in my opinion, for a, a, a young squad like this with a young leadership um, than in our entire conference, for that matter. And so, yeah, I think, yeah, Rutgers is good, but the competition does matter in this particular argument, in my opinion. Yeah, especially four games into a season, right? Yeah. Like you have to, they beat the bad teams. They lost to a decent one. You know, that's just kind of where you're at in this kind of where you have to stay. Um, now, they played, they probably played more fulfilling their on the field talent than Ohio State has, right? They've probably gotten more out of three stars in Ohio St- and two stars in Ohio State has out of five stars comparatively. But, you know, there's still, <laughs> there's still a, a talent gap, right? 38 um, 10, I could see it. That's not out. That's not out. No, of I, question. I think, That's pretty reasonable. I think what they're saying is Michigan has beaten Wisconsin 31 to 10. Ain't looking too bad. And then they said 38 to 10 right below that. So I think they might be talking about that Michigan Wisconsin score. Is that, is that what was going on there? From the Crimson, oh, Crimson okay. I got you. I got you. Yeah. I could see both of them. No, actually yeah, 38, thought, 10. 38, 10 Michigan's winning oh, right now. I think that's why they did. Wisconsin's even worse than I thought. Um, or is Michigan getting a little swagger, Johnny? Is it too painful for us to say that? I don't know. They're okay. <laughs> they're not a bad team, but they were one dimensional and they're just not that great. And it's easy to be Wisconsin's just Wisconsin lost to a bad Notre Dame team. Notre Dame, Notre Dame almost got beat by Toledo and Florida state. They're not great. They're not a great team. And, and Wisconsin lost to them. Um, just saw, but this is not good news. And I hate to rip on player. This is not good news. Um, Cam Brown is so far ahead of seven banks and how good of a player he is, in my opinion. Um, obviously, I'm good with Burke starting, but uh, I don't know if that's injury based. Sue, can you find <laughs> Sue's like Sue's <laughs> our Sue? You are our new Jenny Taff, Aaron Andrews, uh, <laughs> Stephanie Odie, whoever you want to say. Sue, she's got the look too. too. She's a sideline reporter. Sue, <laughs> Sue will be right back with more updates. I. She's I love it. <laughs> she, over here doing the admin work. And I'm like, I, the, I love it. The official Scarlet and great sideline reporter. Um, I, I'm not thrilled to hear that. It, it, does anybody guys comment? Let me know if I'm crazy or not. Do you all also see it this way that Cam Brown is, is miles ahead of, of seven banks in, in talent. Um, we get some more comments in here. The East will have more ranked teams. Yes, they will. Um, Michigan looking dangerous. We can't stop the run. They could gash us. That's yes, but also if you know the run's coming, that that helps, right? Uh, that helps. Dude, Johnny, well, this is for another game. This will be for another game that yeah. we'll chat about it. But Oregon was one dimensional, and we couldn't stop that's true. anything. But yeah, you should be able to beat one dimensional. Yes, in theory. again, that's a different though. We have more different defense now defensive mind it's good thing that that game is weeks away and we can yeah. just do our thing and we really prepare so well for that game we really do um what's bill got to xavier number one safety and two has announced his top three notre dame ohio and iowa state ohio state one that's huge that iowa i, I wonder if this season's got anything to do with that and yeah. two, I've heard he uh, actually no, it's uh, Sonny Styles is people who are they really really wanting for Ohio State. I think he's also a safety as well. Um, but that is really good. That is really really good that Ohio State's in the top three there. Um, everyone is upset about Banks over Brown right now. And Shaw, why does he keep starting? Good question. Um, I man, I hope I'm gonna throw this headset across the room if Banks is starting over Brown. And it's not due to injury. I mean, I, Johnny behind the scenes is coming out on camera. I like this. This is good. I mean, <laughs> it, it's, it's, oh, anyways, let me, <laughs> let me get back to, um, why does Shaw keep starting necessity? He wasn't supposed to be the starter. Obviously Josh Proctor was Shaw was the next guy in line. And then now you have Shaw. 
The other free safety that that took reps was uh, would have been uh, Marcus Hooker. He's absolutely not going to play this year due to if you guys haven't seen the the DUI thing where he was passed out in a McDonald's drive through over the summer. Um, pretty hard with his foot on the brake. I'm glad his foot stayed on the brake. Um, anyways, I yeah, it's, it's it's necessity. I did see them rep Marcus Williamson back there a little bit in the. Uh, in the Akron game. And I don't know if that's just because they rolled the coverage and he was really strong safety or slot corner and they just rolled him back to the high spot. Um, yeah, I'm not look, Shaw can't play, be a starter on this defense. If it wants to be really, really good. Um, not this year anyway, he is a super fast guy, but it's just not, he's not ready yet. Um, I would maybe hope Marcus Williamson could take that spot. Um, yeah, well, I, I'm going to say this. Any Alabama comparison, Alabama is an anomaly at this point. You're 100% right. Bama doesn't have the mishaps we have, but Bama is not. Bama is the exception, not the rule. Um, Jack Cohn That's just it. got benched for Notre Dame. Uh, okay, what's going on in that game? Uh, we better go. I need to find out what's going on. because that game's, I missed the Notre Dame-Cincinnati game. The, the front first hour to talk to you guys. Look how much we love you. <laughs> Crazy. All right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's let's uh, let's uh lock it up. Uh, we appreciate everybody who's tuned in. If you guys want to join us in the next ones that we do as well, any of the pregames, whether it's Johnny and Corey, whether it's Johnny by himself, whether it's me, whatever. We, we love having the fans interact. So you guys, we appreciate everybody who's tuned in and has interacted with us here on the, the live stream. Share this and subscribe to the channel. Make sure you guys are here. Ooh. He said Jack Th- Cohn is throwing picks. Hey, that is good for the Cincinnati, the Fighting Fickles. Let's go get some guys. If you're down there, go get some Skyliner Gold Star Chili and hopefully celebrate this win. Um, You're welcome too, Bill. Thank you guys so much. We'll do it again. We'll do this again. I love doing these, Shane. Thanks for being here. And uh, let's do it again. Here's to a Buckeye victory as always. Goodbye. God bless. Go Bucks.